Hi, my name is Thomas Jaeger. I'm the creator of creatinggreatsoftware.com, where I teach people about uh, designing, architecting, and building great software. This mini course, I will talk about microservices, what they are, how you can combine domain-driven design concepts with microservices, and also how you should avoid certain things when you design and create microservices. And also at the very end of it, uh, I will touch on event-based microservices, how they should communicate and the pros and cons of that. I really hope that you enjoyed this little mini course and uh, let's dive right in. Welcome to another lecture, microservices. What is a microservice? So um, an architecture style that was born from the lessons learned from service-oriented architecture. Um, in general, a microservice does one thing really, really well. And um, by one thing, we'll go into a little bit deeper later on what that means. But keep in mind that a microservice is a, a small version of a larger system or a small piece of a larger system that does one thing really well. Um, it runs in its own process, which means that the microservice should uh, not execute with other systems on the same virtual machine or in the same process uh, or the same server. If you have an in-house system, a microservice should have its own dedicated server or cluster to execute on. So uh, keep that in mind. It should not have the capability of bringing down another uh, process so it should run it in its own process. Generally, it's uh, lightweight in communication. Uh, by lightweight, I mean it's standard protocols like HTTP or TCP communication. Um, it's This is a big one. Uh, it's A microservice should be independently deployable. So let's say you have a fairly large system consisting of five or 10 microservices, maybe even hundreds or even thousands of microservices. Uh, depending on which organization you work for and what what solution you're creating with microservices, uh, you should be able to deploy any changes over time independently, no matter how many microservices you need to work with or how many microservices or external systems this microservice needs to communicate with. So if, uh, if one or two developers or, or a team of developers maintains this particular microservice, they should be able to deploy it independently from any other services in your solution. So this is very critical. Um, this will buy you the, the key to, remember what we discussed in architecture earlier and the architecture election, lecture that your components in your architecture should be maintainable and composable. That was on the, as a whole architecture view. And so when you drill down into the implementation of a microservice, uh, you can think of it as a microservice as a virtual component that you should be able to replace or and or maintain at any time. Um, and this is uh, another point I want to ma make sure that you understand is when you create microservices, um, they should not be so large, it will take you many, many months to rewrite it if you have to. The reason you're not necessarily rewriting the microservice all the time, but people have questions about, okay, how big or how small is a microservice? Uh, that is this two pizza version, right? You have a team that you can feed with two pizzas. So um, in general, you should be able to rewrite any microservice in your solution within four to 12 weeks on average, given some little less or a little more time. but. I would say don't go above uh, 12 weeks approximately if you need to rewrite the system if you ever had to. If you come to the conclusion that, well, it would take us six to 12 months to rewrite it, then you have to step back and look at it. Okay, this microservice may be doing way too much. It has too much responsibility. It may not even do just one thing. It may do multiple things. And remember in, um, in point number one that a microservice is really doing one thing really well. If it does too many things, you should consider in splitting it up into additional microservices. All this uh, flexibility of creating microservices so independently will 
will save you a lot of headaches in the long run and especially for maintainability and so the point i already touched on is how big is a microservice uh, it should be you should be able to maintain a microservice with a small team of one to five people. It's perfectly fine that one person can maintain, create and maintain a microservice. Absolutely, it's possible nowadays. Um, you don't need a whole team to do these. The key is how you compose these microservices together. How is the communication working between those microservices? Like I said in the architecture piece, that how you're putting these together is key. How is the communication between the different components working? And if you drill down into a microservice, as we do later, what, exa what exactly is happening inside the microservice? How does it communicate inside of the artifacts that it needs to operate? So um, when you have an application, most likely we, you, you will have more than one microservice that you need to work with or together with. Uh, and this is this is the strength of an application that's consisting with or composed with multiple microservices. Uh, you may start out with one or two microservices, maybe to do an MVP, to do a prototype of some sort. But then, uh, as time goes on, new requirements come in place, and you may have not known about the new requirements, which is fine. Uh, the, the the composability of a microservice composed system. It gives you that flexibility so you can add additional microservices additional functionality exposed in a new microservice microservices can be very very small as long as they do one thing really well and isolate it and no other microservice is doing this i think then you are really taking advantage of um, the power of microservices composing them together to form one cohesive solution just like we discussed in the architecture earlier <clears throat> 